And do you think it makes sense at all for healthcare to be tied to employers anymore, given how much our workforce has changed? Yeah, so in the United States, greater than 50% of Americans today get their health service support through an employer. That, that is a manifestation from a long time ago, post-World War II, um, wage controls that existed. But, but we are where we are. Answer your questions, yes, I do. And the reason why is an employer actually has a vested interest in helping to keep their employees healthy and productive and present from a work standpoint. Two, the work site and the culture of an employer creates some mechanisms to engage an individual, ways to communicate, ways to provide on-site care, ways to provide peer support, program support, et cetera. So there's incentive alignment, there's culture you could pull against and support it, and then there's delivery mechanisms. So we think the answer is yes, and we have a ton of bright spots where we could point to employers that have innovated with us and we've innovated with them, and their employees and therefore their business is better off, and those employees' family members are better off because they're getting better, more comprehensive health care. And what do you think makes America different? Why are we spending so much on health care? Can you point to one thing that, like our policies or something in America that, that is a problem? Yeah, so our system is quite different, right? We're a global company. We do business all over the world. So we are able to see um, systems in the most developed OECD countries and developing countries around the world. There's multiple differences. First and foremost, the United States is the largest um, sick care interventional system in the world. We spend the majority of our money and resources addressing people once they're sick. We need to spend some more of our resources keeping people healthy in the first case and identifying people who are at risk of health events and lowering those health risks. Some other countries do that better through social service support, community-based health support, et cetera. Secondly, we have more specialists and more hospitals per capita than other OECD countries and less primary care be it OBGYN, pediatrician, family practitioners, and, and we need to moderate that a little bit to, again, help to coordinate the whole person on the front end. There's trade-offs in the way we've built our system. As a company, we've had a great success partnering with physicians through what we call collaborative accountable care relationships. We have 375 of which that are up and running with physicians and another 125 with hospitals and working more comprehensively. But in a nutshell, we wait too long in terms of trying to fix somebody once they're sick, as opposed to engage on the front end and keep people healthy in the first place. That's where Cigna expands a lot of resources. Secondly, we spend a lot more money on the high cost intervention, as opposed to enabling the primary care physician, the geriatrician, the pediatrician to have more resources to help to coordinate care for individuals. And um, we have a different pricing scheme relative to some of our services, be they pharmaceutical or otherwise, versus other parts of the world.